Nature, climate, health, and the economy are all closely linked. It's important when we think about supporting a green recovery from COVID-19 that we consider the ways that we can advance our goals to conserve nature, take climate action, and grow the clean economy. The good news is that meeting all three of our targets can actually also help support the health of Canadians. Here at the Smart Prosperity Institute, supported by Health Canada, we've been exploring exactly how investments in low-carbon infrastructure, nature-based solutions, and a green recovery from COVID-19 can help advance health in communities across Canada. This explainer video should help give you a top three reasons why health considerations are important to keep in mind when thinking about a green economic recovery and investments into our future. There's a close relationship between our health and the health of nature and the environment. Ultimately, when policymakers make investments that support nature and climate, it can help achieve health outcomes that are more equitable, support greater resilience in communities and economies, and achieve cost-effective policy outcomes that can help all Canadians. Investments that avoid negative outcomes while also providing benefits for human health, are important for designing a green recovery strategy that can help Canada meet its targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and reach net zero by 2050. Governments have many options to direct spending to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. They could build more parks, invest in building solar and wind capacity to generate electricity. They could retrofit buildings or electrify public transit. Understanding the health outcomes associated with these measures can help identify where spending might generate the largest benefit for communities across the country. This can help governments direct spending to where it might offer the greatest environmental health benefit per dollar spent. Our research shows that investing in environmental health makes economic sense. We are excited to share with you our top three findings. A substantial body of evidence points to how nature-based solutions and low-carbon infrastructure can reduce health risks, such as air pollutants. Air pollution is a major driver of several non-communicable diseases that can have short and long-term impacts on cardiovascular, respiratory, gastrointestinal, neurological, reproductive, and mental health. Those same nature-based and low-carbon projects provide a range of health benefits as well. Investing in urban green space enables more Canadians to have active lifestyles and having more access to urban parks improves overall mental health and self-reported well-being. Currently, limited local data makes it difficult to track, monitor, and account for the health cost savings of nature-based solutions and low-carbon infrastructure projects. However, many studies have shown that when we account for these benefits, substantial cost savings are possible when compared to non-green alternatives. While these projects do offer real health benefits to individuals, it's important to remember that these health benefits are not going to be experienced equally by every single person in the community. What good health looks like for each individual is deeply personal and varies based on a range of individual and environmental characteristics. Ultimately, the factors that influence someone's well-being can range from individual factors, like whether or not someone has a pre-existing medical condition, or environmental factors, like their work and home life, their surrounding environment, their socioeconomic status, or whether or not they have proper access to medical care. Another key consideration influencing health outcomes is whether or not someone experiences health inequities. Health inequities are defined as the gaps in health outcomes that emerge as a result of the unjust distribution of health impacts across different members of the community. The extent to which an individual is subject to health inequities has an enormous factor on how much they are impacted by a given investment in low-carbon infrastructure or nature-based solution. A good example is urban parks. Urban parks come with a host of benefits to mental health and physical health from increased activity levels. But being able to access the park is often tied to a sense of safety, belonging, and acceptance within a community. Those feelings are not always equally distributed across community members, and notably, Different groups, such as women, children, seniors, people living with disabilities, and persons of color, may be subject to health inequities that prevent them from readily accessing the park or feeling a sense of belonging or community. Ultimately, for policymakers to ensure that the health impacts of these projects are distributed amongst as many people as possible, it's important to keep in mind that inclusivity is a key factor. In our urban parks example, 
Ensuring that everyone has access is critical to making sure that the health outcomes can be equitably distributed and that the investments in these projects ultimately make communities more resilient and more inclusive. The health benefits of improved outcomes a community experiences will vary by project and by community, which makes assessing these benefits critical for identifying which projects offer the greatest benefit to advance health and environmental outcomes. In our recent report, we looked at different green recovery projects in three communities across Canada. What we found is that while every project offers health benefits to every community, Certain projects simply offer more benefits per dollar spent depending on the region. Overall though, spending on electrifying public transit and retrofitting commercial buildings offers the largest average potential for advancing health by reducing air pollution. This means that targeting spending on these projects can meaningfully deliver improved health outcomes for Canadians across the country. If local and regional governments want to build health resilience in their communities, first they need to understand what those potential benefits might be. In our Health and Nature report, we examine how municipalities across the country are connecting the health, nature, and climate nexus in their urban planning documents. We found that while those connections are made, often actually tracking how environmental changes lead to health outcomes is quite rare. To support municipal capacity building, in our report we looked at more than 20 ecological and economic tools and how they can support decision-making at different stages of a project's process, be it initial development, implementation, or longer-term monitoring and evaluation. Investments in low-carbon infrastructure, clean technology, nature-based solutions, and a green economic recovery offer the opportunity to really advance health outcomes for communities across Canada and support greater resilience in a Canadian transition to net zero emissions as we conserve nature and grow the clean economy. We invite you to visit the Smart Prosperity Institute's project page on health to read our in-depth reports and see more of our work and thinking in this space.